Welcome back to the 3n plus 1 show. We're looking for a loop of numbers to disprove the 3n plus 1 conjecture. Luckily, we found a promising way to hunt for loops. We want to pick a good loop, loop length k and a reasonable number x of odd numbers in that loop. Probably x will be around 63% of k. Amazingly, we found that if 2 to the k minus 3 to the x is small, then there's a good chance of an integer loop at that length k. And in fact, if 2 to the k minus 3 to the x is 1, then an integer loop is assured and will be rich and famous. Well, not rich, probably not famous. Our friends will be like, that's nice. Okay, 2 to the k minus 3 to the x equals 1 definitely has a solution where k equals 2 and x equals 1, because 4 minus 3 equals 1. So here's the 3n plus 1 computer for k equals 2, x equals 1. Doesn't matter where we put the piece because any beta we get out is going to be divisible by 1, so we're guaranteed to have an integer loop. And so the fact that 2 to the x minus 2 to the k minus 3 to the x equals 1 here is directly responsible for our old friend, the 2, 1, 2, 1 loop. What about other solutions to 2 to the k minus 3 to the x equals 1? During the Middle Ages, someone named Gersonides peered all the way down the number line and announced that there are no other solutions. I didn't look at his proof, but I figure if this guy could do it in the Middle Ages, I can give it a try. So 2 to the k minus 3 to the x equals 1 means 2 to the k minus 1 equals 3 to the x, which implies 2 to the k minus 1 would have to be divisible by 3 and nothing else. So let's look at 2 to the k minus 1 for various values of k. You can see already that none of these are divisible by 3 and nothing else. And you can use a computer to check the first billion billion values of k and you get the same answer. But I would say, is it true for all values of k? Nobody knows. Just kidding. Gersonides knows. Okay, so let's consider two cases. First, when k is odd, you can see 2 to the k minus 1 isn't divisible by 3 at all. So for odd loop lengths, 2 to the k minus 3 to the x is never going to be 1. Now, when k is even, 2 to the k minus 1 is divisible by 3. But notice there's always an additional non-3 factor. So let's prove that with some 8th grade math. Since k is even, we can say k equals 2m and write 2 to the k minus 1 as 2 to the 2m minus 1. And we can factor that into 2 to the m minus 1 times 2 to the m plus 1. One of these factors is not divisible by 3 because they're two apart. So we've proven there's an additional non-3 factor. So considering both cases, odd k and even k, we've got an airtight proof. Thanks, Gersonides, for providing the confidence. Well, if 2 to the k minus 3 to the x can't equal 1, could it ever be something really low, like 5 or 7 for some huge loop length? I, in the 1960s, a famous English mathematician named Baker proved basically no. So the powers of 2 and the powers of 3 are known to pal around together at low exponents. Like 256 is pretty close to 243. Actually, really close. But as the exponents get larger, the powers stop being friends. And way down the number line, the powers of 2 and the powers of 3 position themselves further and further apart from each other. Baker's proof describes roughly how far apart, but the proof involves dozens of pages of transcendental number theory. So for right now, we're not going to go there. We are going to keep searching for a 3n plus 1 loop, though, or die trying, or make an airtight proof that no loops exist. Any of those would be good outcomes, except for the dying one. Okay, see you next time.